Hi everyone, welcome to episode three. In this video, we'll be creating all the statues you see in the forest. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at all the statues in the forest. We're gonna go ahead and create those models in a Maya and ZBrush. We're gonna print them out. We're gonna take a look at the end and see, and see how far we get this week. Just wanna say a big thank you for everyone that's commented and um, left me really nice feedback on the video. Um, it's really encouraging to know that people are enjoying these videos. Um, and thank you for being so enthusiastic about it. I really appreciate it. So there's really a couple of statues in the ruins in the forest that we see in Omen Hen. Um, the first one is one that we see scattered about in a lot of different places. And the second one is a bit more unique. I've only seen it once so far in the footage. And it's a statue that kind of watches as Lurtz aims and shoots Baromir. And we'll have a look at that. I tried to find some more reference of it in some of my books and um, because I'd know from the appendices in the film that the statues and other bits and pieces used from Weathertop were used in Iron Man Hen. Um, the only shot I could find was in uh, the visual companion book, um, which isn't which isn't <laughs> which isn't particularly great for reference, so I just went back and I chopped out the original one from uh, this shot that you see here. And we'll just have to use this one as a guide. I'm just going through in Photoshop and I'm manipulating the image so that I can really, really see those landmarks because the image isn't very clear, but we'll try and get everything we can from it as a good starting point. So with that set up, I went into a piece of software called Make Human. This is a free piece of software. I've linked it below for anyone that's interested. It's a really powerful tool. And what we're gonna use it for is to create a very simple, low resolution human shape. We're going to use the shape essentially to sculpt the cloth over, but I'm also going to create the head of that statue from the low resolution head that we get here. So there's my low res cage. The other nice thing about this is we can very, very quickly create a rig, the joint system, so we can actually pose this in our scene view as well, which is going to be really, really handy. So here's our base mesh imported into Maya. We just need the head to start with. We'll bring the body back in once the head's, once blocking out the head is complete. So we'll delete the body, grab our head, and we'll start lining everything up with our reference. So I like to use the eye sockets as a way to uh, line everything up onto that image. We can start manipulating points and pulling things into place to match the image. And scaling it in as well just to best as best match this reference as we can because there's low resolution geometry it's easy to go in and manipulate these points um, pulling the chin down now just to create the beard a lot of the more detailed part of this mesh will be done in zbrush and here's the uh, the sort of hat that he wears the helmet i'm just using half of a sphere and lining this up into place and i'll start pushing and pulling points trying to get that shape Extending down the edges here so we can get these sides into place and only adding geometry where I really need it. It's really important you keep your geometry as low res as possible and use all of the points that you've got. Because if you go too far, if you add too much geometry, you overcomplicate it quickly and it becomes a bit too difficult to manage and certainly very difficult to try and get the shape that you're looking for. So that'll do as a starting point for the head and the helmet. We'll bring our body back in here and because we exported it with a rig we can now manipulate the joints into place take the hands off because we don't need those we'll just pull those legs in as well so here i've got a low res plane and what i'm doing here is i'm just really really simple just scaling and moving low resolution geometry so all these little points are moving into place to create a really simple mesh or shell around the body I'm only really using the body just as a guide really to see where the cloth goes and on my other screen I'm constantly referencing what it looks like from the film. Start extruding points down and then we can duplicate that section over as well. And I'm just pushing and pulling points until I get something really solid that I know will work well in ZBrush when I start to lay in all the cloth details. Picking up those landmark points as well from the images Filling in the, uh, the wrists and there's a little brooch detail going in. 
So here we are, pretty good starting point so far. And now we're into ZBrush and we're gonna start adding some of the details, the straps, the creases. We're gonna start just really carefully, the big shapes first then the smaller ones as we work around this model and add the details we need. Working my way up the front of the cloth now, trying to add all the detail that I see in a reference image. And I'm just taking my time to try and get it looking as good as possible. Starting on the beard here as well, just starting to put, get the details onto the face. And here I've got the, the hat he wears. And from the image that we've used, I can see there are some small like linings and details on, on the surface of the hat. So I'm just having to guess what's going on at the back, but I'm just trying to put in some detail and be as faithful as I can to that original image that we used. Starting to chip away at the uh, cloth now, starting to make it, make it look like stone, weathered stone. Now here's a nice little trick you can do in Zed brush. Um, because when you look at the model on screen, you don't really know what those details are gonna look like when they're printed. What you can do is you can polish the whole surface of the object and you save that as a morph target. And what you can do then, you can transfer the high resolution back onto a layer. So now you've got this layer where it's zero to one, zero is completely polished and one has all your detail on. Well, then you can go into your layers, you can duplicate that layer now and you can control how much more detail you can push and pull into that model. So for this test, I did four different states basically i did one normal like we saw on screen before all the way up to kind of double the amount of uh, detail i put in and we'll, we'll see we'll see how it looks at the end then to finish i just chip the bottom of the base and move on to the next one so i started on the next statue using exactly the same techniques as i did on the first um the head on this model uh, to try and save some time I just used the model from the first statue we did and pushed it and pulled it around a little bit and it didn't work, it wasn't successful. And the cloak itself, you know, I was really, really, really happy with how that came out. But the head, the head is just a result of working till two o'clock in the morning, trying to fix something that you should just leave behind, you know. Um, this project is all about being transparent and this was, <laughs> this was as my daughter would call it, I was on the struggle bus. Um, the head, I should have just deleted it and made a new one, which is what I ended up doing anyway, because I ended up with some weird PlayStation 1 Tekken kind of shaped head. Um, but the next, uh, you know, I went to bed. It was about two o'clock in the morning the next day. I got up in the morning and I started from scratch, which was what I should have done originally. So here I got all of the landmarks of that, of that forest statue. And it didn't really begin to kind of visually look close or correct until I started really, really pushing the, the kind of soft detail back and chiseling away at it, trying to make it look a bit more like stone. And then at that point, I started to feel like I, I was kind of getting somewhere with it. And here we're starting to harden things up and shape things up and really give it that stone look. And I feel like at this point, I was starting to win this uh, this little war I was having with this face. Just experimenting, putting cracks of detail in and stuff like that. I was, um, yeah, I was pretty happy with the result. So I went onto the eyeballs and started chipping them away. I certainly didn't want any perfect spherical shapes on this model. And then it was just done to modeling the cloth. I did it slightly different with this one. Um, just using a standard brush with a with an alpha square, uh, very very similar to kind of clay tubes. You draw in the detail; it looks very very harsh at this point. What you do is you get it to the point where 
you kind of got a lot of the date details done and then you can just smooth over it and it leaves behind a nice kind of pattern of the cloth. Did the same thing with the hood as well. And just going back in and adding a few more creases, but not too many. Don't want to go overboard, it's supposed to be a statue. Then starting to add the uh, the rock kind of finish, and the dings and the, the little dents everywhere. I ended up doing four different versions of this one, which we'll see in a minute. And just moving that old head to match the reference. So remember at the beginning when I said there were two statues? <laughs> I was wrong. On Thursday night, I realized there was a third one here. So with this one, the image is slightly tilted, but we can still use it to get a good, a good decent start on, on modeling our basic shape. I approached it the same way as the other two, low resolution detail in my adding all the creases and the details in ZBrush. Going in, adding the chipstone look, adding lots and lots of weather into this one, pretty badly damaged. And uh, yeah, that's the end result. So here I've printed those first four statues, all slightly different details, and we can look at those a bit more closely here. The statue on the left is the one I was working on on screen. And as you move progressively to the right, they're the ones where we did that more target layer trick where we could push more and more detail out as we went along. I mean, you can see on the back of the hats how much detail has been lost on the left one. And as you move along, you can really, really see it. Of course, to really see these statues pop, what we'll do is we'll add some primer and we'll give it some black wash as well. And here are the other four statues, as well as the, the ruined one that we found, the third one, all come out of the printer. So again, these have been primed and we'll add a black wash to them just to help see those details pop. And um, let's have a look at the final result. Thank you so much again for watching. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed it and you're enjoying this series of videos. In the next one, we'll be completing all of the pillars and the other scatter ruins around the forest floor before we make our way up to the giant staircase as we move further up Amon Hen. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing and please also share it in other groups where you think people might be interested. It would really, really help. And uh, I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.